In this presentation, we will enter a reversing entry related to revenue or accounts receivable. In other words, last time we entered an adjusting entry, an adjusting entry to bring the revenue back into the correct time period. However, now we need to enter the reversing entry so that we do not have the entry duplicated as of the time it was originally input into the system. Time to rise above the crowd with Sage 50 Cloud Accounting. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. We're going to be starting off by opening up our financial statements. So we're going to go to the drop down on uh, the reports and forms where the financial statements are. We're going to go into the financial statements. I missed it, but you know where I was going. I'm going into the, into the financial statements. So we're going to open up the balance sheet. Let's open up that balance sheet. It's going to be for the month of February. February, that's the one. Let's open up the income statement as well. So we'll go back on over and open up the income statement. So income statement. Let's also do that for the month of February. And so we're going to be, un I'm going to uncheck these ones so that it doesn't show those zero balances because I don't need them. So I don't want to see them. And so here we have it. So here's our income statement. So last time we entered a, a adjusting entry to pull the accounts receivable back into the correct period because the invoice had been entered. However, it was entered in March and we did the work in February. So we needed to bring the revenue and other related accounts back into February when the actual work was done in accordance with the revenue recognition principle. But now if we don't reverse it, then it's going to be in there twice as of the date of the original invoice was that which was actually after the cutoff date in March. So now what we need to do is a reversing entry so that that doesn't happen. So here's our adjusting entry that we did. We need to reverse it now as of the first day in the next time period, which is going to be March 1st. So the easiest way to, to think about uh, the reversing entry, in my opinion, is to just take the adjusting entry and then reverse it exactly, which seems kind of obvious and straightforward. But honestly, if you look at uh, when people do reversing entries, they often get mixed up because they try to reshuffle the account order to put the debits on top and this and that. And uh, so I wouldn't rec recommend against that and just and just take this adjusting entry. I'm just going to copy this same whole thing here. And I'm just going to say copy this and paste it. By the way, this is the same way that and I'm going to paste it here. You might want to do like a, a credit memo. I would actually write out the actual sales invoice and then think about the credit memo or something like that. Right. And so I'm going to delete the numbers here and then I'm going to I'm going to re I'm going to delete basically the indentations so that we just have the account names. Now, rather than reshuffling these accounts to try to put the debits on top, I'm just going to say I'm just going to do the exact opposite of what's over there. I'm just going to say this is going to be a credit now instead of a debit of that number. And then we're going to debit instead of crediting this number. And we're going to debit instead of crediting this number. And then we're going to credit instead of debiting this number. And then we're going to debit instead of credit this number so we just did the exact opposite i'm just going to pick this up and do the exact opposite i'm not going to try to shuffle these accounts you might look at this and say hey well these two should be on top because those are the debits well if you start moving the order of the accounts it really in my mind complicates uh, the thing to be able to go from the adjusting entry to the reversing entry so i would rather just enter it like this and there's nothing you can do to make honestly this entry look normal because this isn't a normal entry, you know. We, we don't typically decrease sales. That just doesn't typically happen. Cost of goods sold is almost never credited. It shouldn't happen. And inventory, you know, well, those are the most unusual items of it. So th there's nothing you could do to kind of make that normal in, your, in, in the way you record it. So putting the debits on top does, doesn't really help it. What you want to think about is to say, to, to make this fit in your mind, is to say, hey, this is the adjusting entry. And I'm simply reversing it exactly. So don't try to think of the reversing entry without first thinking of the adjusting entry. And that's the way I would I would do it. You're not trying to memorize a whole new thing. You're just saying, hey, that's what we did on the adjusting entry. This is going to reverse it. Same with a credit memo. I think of it in a similar fashion. So now I'm going to hide these columns by going from A to D. And then we're just going to enter this as a reversing entry. I'm going to right click and hide these columns. And then I'm just going to enter these as of March 1st. So let's do that. Let's go back on over to our um, information over here. Back on over and we're going to go to the tasks drop down and we're going down to the uh, journal general journal entry. And we're going to do this general journal entry as of 030120. 
030120. Then we're looking for accounts receivable. That's where we start with this thing. So this is going to be accounts receivable. And obviously 030120 is the first day after the cutoff date. That's why that's why we're doing it there. So this is going to be a reversing entry. And that's going to be for the amount of the 547.50. So it's a credit. Credit 547.50. And then the other side is going to be to sales, which I think is 4,000. That's going to be a debit of 500, I'm pretty sure. Let's double check. I'm, I'm almost positive. The debit 500 and then the sales tax payable. Sales tax payable. Let's go into the sales tax payable. And that's going to be a liability. So there it is. There it is. That's going to be for the 4750. 4750. Then we have uh, the cost of goods sold. So I'm going to be looking at the cost of goods sold. It's going to be down below here somewhere. There it is. Cost of goods sold. That's going to be a credit this time of 400. As can be seen here. Credit of 400. And then inventory. Lastly, we have the inventory. And so there's that. And that's going to be a debit of 400. So there it is. We have reversed it exactly. Let's go ahead and record this and see what then happens on the financial statement. So I'm going to go ahead and say save and then close and then go to the financial statements here, here, and we're in the balance sheet. And let's change the, the date. Let's actually look at the income statement first. If I go to the income statement, and now I'm gonna I'm gonna change the date. We're still good as of the end of the cutoff date. In other words, if I double click income, our adjusting entry is still in there, pulling this revenue into the current period of February. Now we want to go to March, and we're trying to say, hey, did we make everything okay for the accounting department in March, or did we mess them up with our adjusting entry? We made things correct as of the cutoff date, but we did we mess up the normal accounting process after the cutoff date? So we're gonna go back in. And we're going to say, see, it goes back to zero here. It's back to zero. Why? If I select the detail, you can see that uh, we, have the re we have the reversing entry that's going to basically reverse it out. And that would result in like a, a, a negative amount in there until the invoice was entered. And these two match out, the 500 and the 500, then tie out and match out to zero so that it's, it's zero. So in other words, as of March, when the invoice was actually entered, there's no revenue recorded because we pulled it into the prior period with the adjusting entry. We then reversed it as of the 1st of um, March. So we pulled it back into February. We, we reversed it as of the 1st of March. Now you might say, why didn't we reverse it as of March 6th? Because that's the day the invoice was made. In other words, if you look at the dates from March 1st to March 5th, it's going to be wrong. It's not, it's not only going to be wrong, it's going to be very ugly looking because it's going to have a negative revenue account on the income statement, which shouldn't happen. Uh, so why would we do that? And the reason is because logistically it works good for us. We don't, we don't want to enter the reversing entry as of anything other than one day. We want all of our reversing entries happening on the same time period. Otherwise, it's hard for us to go figure out where the reversing entries were. So, so the strategy here is that we want the financial statements to be correct on an accrual basis, basis as of the financial statement date, the end of the month or year. We do that with the adjusting entries. And then we want to make things logistically easy in the middle. So it's, it's logistically easier for us to reverse this as of the first day, even though it results in five days of it being not technically correct. And we could have fixed that by just entering it as of the sixth day, right? But the added benefit of having those four days be more technically correct is not as great as the, as the benefit of having all of our reversing entries as of the same day, typically. So that's going to be the, the rationale there. So then if I close this back out, the other side is going to be on the cost of goods sold. If we double click on the cost of goods sold, there it is. One same kind of thing. We, we reversed it out and then here's the original invoice. Those two things cancel out because the actual cost of goods sold is going to be reported from a financial statement standpoint in uh, February. So, and we did that. So then we're going to go back over to the accounts receivable. If we go into the accounts receivable, uh, let's change the date so that we're in March. So if we change the date, 
to be like the range and then we go into March so let's go into March and say okay same things happening here for the AR accounts receivable so then we have it again the reversing entry happening here and then the actual invoice because we pulled in the receivable to be on the books in February before the cutoff date with the adjusting entry and then you can do the same for the accounts receivable I won't do them all accounts receivable and the sales tax payable same concept same idea you'll have in there now if we look at the the uh, subsidiary ledger for the receivable now we should be closer we should be off by 300 so I'm going to go back over here and go to the reports drop down and we're going to go into the the accounts receivable this time and then let's take a look at the aged receivables and then scroll all the way down to the bottom all the way down we got a lot of stuff happening and there's our our number now this is the end of february i want to make this in march let's make this with the date here we'll change the old date to the end of march and then let's do this again and then i'll scroll it back this time i'll use the scroll thing because there's a lot of them and maybe this will be faster if i just pull this little thingy down to the bottom and then pull out the trusty calculator trusty calculator so we can do some calculating here's the 10850.55 minus and then if we go on back to the to the balance sheet we have minus the one one five oh up oh, hold on one 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 five oh point five five and now we're off by 300 and that 300 is that negative that negative amount over here uh that's going to be this negative uh amount and we talked about that before but the bottom line is we the adjusting entry kind of threw us off between this this reconciling difference because we didn't assign a customer to it we just entered it so that threw our, our register off over here because we didn't have a customer but now we reversed it out and so now we're only off by that negative uh 300. a similar kind of factor could be involved with the inventory as well because it has a subsidiary ledger that's going to be tracking the inventory items so in any case that's going to be it for now let's get out of here